Hello everyone, welcome to part 5 of my remastered install of creating a digital audio synthesizer. In this part, we'll be looking into implementing a better way to add parameters to our oscillators, and by doing so, adding a volume parameter for each oscillator. So if we head over to our oscillator class, and look at how we implement the tone parameter to change the frequency, we'll notice that there's a lot of code uh, implementing the mouse listeners, the mouse standard listener and the mouse motion listener. To, we'll have to duplicate all this code in a similar fashion to add a volume parameter to handle all the mouse movements and that's just a lot of code and a lot of mess in the oscillator constructor. So I thought of a way in the utilities class in parameter handling to implement a, a standard function to add the listeners to the components which will be the oscillator parameter components. So let's add a new function into this class. It'll be a public static void call it add parameter mouse listeners and it's going to want to take in the parameters a component which will be what we're adding the mouse listeners to the synth control container which will we'll use this to reference the mouse click location because if you remember in the control container this stores the point at which the mouse was clicked and a, a minimum value a maximum value for what the parameters can go to and a value step so how much the parameter will increase or decrease depending if we move, move the mouse up or down sorry and we're going to want a reference wrapper what this will do is because we have the wavetable uh, the tone offset sorry here this is what we change but we can't change native types in different classes or passing them through different functions because they pass by value and we can't actually change the value of a native type and have its value be retained for whatever function we've been calling. So we can add a simple class here, we'll just call it ref wrapper, and it will be a generic class. We'll just have type t. We'll have a public t value and a constructor. Public ref wrapper. And we'll just want a t val. And inside here, we'll do this dot val equals val. Simple class, and we can go back to the utilities. We can have a ref wrapper of the type integer as the parameter, and finally a procedure, which will be the on change procedure, which basically handles. Um, what happens once the parameters, once a mouth movement's been registered and a, the parameter's been incremented or decremented. So in that procedure we could store tone parameter dot set text and apply tone offset. So whatever happens after the value has been changed. So let's start this function by adding the standard mouse listener to the component. So component add mouse listener, new mouse adapter, override the pressed and released methods. And in the mouse press event, we can basically copy the code from the one in the oscillator constructor. So we'll want to copy this blank cursor, uh, which creates the, the blank cursor so we can't see the mouse. And then we want to set the cursor of the component to the blank cursor. And then we'll want to set the, the mouse click location of the synth controller container. But to do that, we'll have to define a property or two properties quickly which will be the public point get mouse click location and oops which will return the mouse click location and a, a setter so public void set mouse click location to whatever points pass through it so this dot mouse click location equals mouse click location and we can also set this to private now because we'll only be referencing it through these methods here the properties sorry now that's all done we can head back to the uh, add parameter mouse listener method and set the container set the mouse click location to e dot get location on screen and for the mouse release method we can simply component dot set cursor cursor dot get default cursor next we want to add the mouse motion listener to the component so we can do a component add mouse motion listener a new mouse adapter 
with a mouse that overrides mouse.dragged and we can use the same code as the other mouse dragged event in the oscillator constructor here which is very similar which will be if container dot get mouse click location dot y doesn't equal e dot get y on screen so if the if the mouse has moved on the y axis remember then we'll set boolean mouse moving up equals container dot get mouse click location dot y minus e dot get y on screen is greater than zero this is the way we detect if the mouse is moving up or down and we'll put an if statement that states if the mouse is moving up and the parameter is value is smaller than max value then we will increment the the wrapped value by the value step otherwise else if the mouse is not moving up and the parameter dot value is greater than the minimum value then we will decrement the parameter dot value by the value step again next we want to check if the on change procedure is null and if it isn't we will handle it so on change procedure and we will print the stack trace this time Usually when we set print stack trace to false, it means the only possible exception that, that can be thrown is a interrupt exception, which would have likely caused on purpose. But if there's some logic in here that throws any type of exception, we will print it so we know what's going on. And then once we change the procedure, we can call the parameter robot dot mouse move to the container dot component dot get mouse click location dot x and the container dot get mouse click location dot y so now we can head over to our oscillator class and actually use this new function so what we can do in here is remove all the add mouse motion listener and add standard mouse listener code and replace it with utils dot parameter handling dot add parameter mouse listeners the component will pass the tone parameter the container will pass as this because oscillator extends in the control container and we need a minimum value which is the minus tone offset limit the maximum value which is tone offset limit value step which is one in this case and we need a reference wrapper wrapper for the parameter so notice how we have just a native integer for the tone offset we we'll replace this with a private ref wrapper of the type integer which will simply be the tone offset parameter and set it to a new instance of ref wrapper with the default value of zero head back into this method and we can pass the uh, tone offset and now we'll want a the on change procedure which will set to a new procedure oops and if you remember on the previous on the mouse motion listener we had before that we added before we redefined this method it simply applied the tone offset and set the text of the tone parameter to uh, space x plus string dot format uh, the format string which was percent dot 3f and then the get tone offset so let's go ahead and see if this works the same as it did in the oops we are trying to divide the actual tone offset parameter by a thousand which is impossible because the different types so let's just put a val there and then start up the program so we've got a tone parameter let's try dragging it up to its maximum value so the mouse motion listener is working and the standard click listener and it can't go past its min maximum value let's drag it to its minimum bit of a drag and it hits it and stops now let's actually try if it actually affects the sound the frequency of the sound that we're hearing so it seems to be working just fine with the upside now that we can add mouse listeners with less code for any other parameters we want to add so next let's try and add a volume parameter after the tone parameter here so we'll use the same uh, method we've been adding the tone parameter with which is create a j label 
call it volume parameter and we'll set it to a new instance of a J label with the text space 100% as its default value uh, we will set its bounds to vex we'll have 222 uh, 65 50 and 25 to the same width and height uh, we'll set its border to the standard border which is in utils dot window design dot line border and now we'll call the same utility function from parameter handling which is add parameter mouse listener we'll pass the volume parameter uh, this as the container the minimum value which is 0 the max which is 100 1 as the step and we'll need to create another reference wrapper which will be, let's just remove these un, unneeded import statements uh, the private ref wrapper of type integer volume just call it volume equals new ref wrapper 100 as its default value uh, we'll pass the volume as the parameter and the on change procedure will need to set the text of the parameter so we can just put volume parameter dot set text space plus volume dot val plus percentage and after that we'll just want to add another j label which will be the volume text so as just the same as the tone text which just says volume above the parameter so we know what the parameter is uh, it'll be a new instance of j label with the text volume and it will have the bounds volume text dot set bounds of 225, 40, 75 and 25 we will need to add the volume text and also add the actual volume parameter add volume parameter and now let's start the program and see where the volume parameter has been placed oops we put the percentage in front of the 100 that's better and let's try dragging it up and down so it stops at 100 and goes all the way down to 0 that's perfect but remember it doesn't do anything right now but well, we can fix that by applying an implementation for it private double get volume multiplier which will return volume dot val divided by 100 and in get next sample we can get the wavetable index multiplied by get volume multiplier so when we start the program let's turn all of these oscillators to zero and press a key we can hear nothing but let's try turning one of the oscillators up while pressing a key now we can hear a relatively quiet sine wave let's try turning two sine waves up like this, or we'll turn all three up, press a key just a fixed frequency sine wave and let's try putting a square wave at 0% and increasing the volume So we can hear the square wave clearly fading in and out and that concludes the volume parameter edition. This has been part 5 of my remastered tutorial of creating a digital audio synthesizer. In the next part, which will probably be the final main part of the series, we will be adding a way of visualising the final waveform that will be produced from the oscillators or all the oscillators combined based on all their parameters. I think that once we add a purely aesthetic feature like that, the synthesizer will basically be complete as it qualifies as a very functional real-time audio synthesizer. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part 6.